Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Whether you are a long time subscriber or just stumble upon this video, I want to express my gratitude for your support and for choosing to spend your valuable time with me. In my previous upload, I discussed the essential skills that aspiring performance tester should possess. If you haven't seen that video yet, I encourage you to check it out before continuing this one. The link can be found in the description below. In today's video, we will explore some additional skills that are beneficial for performance testers. While these skills are not mandatory, they can certainly give you an edge in your performance testing career. Once you feel confident with the must-have skills, I highly recommend focusing on acquiring these good-to-have skills to enhance your efficiency as a performance tester. Alright, enough with the intro, let's jump right into it. Now let's dive into the first good-to-have skills on our list, basic networking concepts. This is a highly beneficial skill for any performance tester once they master the essential skills. Essentially, you should have a solid understanding of computer networking. This includes knowing how it operates and being familiar with the different network types such as LAN, WAN and MAN. It is important to familiar with some of the fundamental networking terminologies. For example, you should be able to explain what an IP address is, how to discover it and the distinction between IPv4 and IPv6 address. Sometimes, during the troubleshooting sessions, the network engineers might look for the source IP address from where the traffic being generated. So, you must provide the correct information. In addition to that, you should also understand what is DNS, Domain Name System. What is the purpose of DNS? Understanding its purpose and functionality will greatly contribute to your overall knowledge. You should possess a high level understanding of firewalls. Why we will have firewalls in the network? What are all the high level benefits from firewalls? Finally, you should be aware of ports and the specific ports through which an application is listening for traffic. While these skills may not be mandatory, acquiring them will undoubtedly enhance your performance testing activities. The next one from our list is Web Services and API Concepts. In today's technology driven world, Web Services and APIs play a vital role in facilitating the seamless communication between multiple software solutions. It is essential to possess a solid understanding of Web Services and APIs. You should be familiar with their fundamental purpose and how they differ in terms of implementations. Nowadays, many organizations heavily rely on APIs to interact with their dependent systems. They prioritize early performance testing to identify and address any performance issues at the initial stages. During these early stages, we may be asked to validate the performance of the API. So, it is crucial to have a knowledge about the REST API concepts and how they are tested. You should familiarize with the various API methods, for example, get, post, delete, etc. You should also familiar with the request and response structure of the API. What are all the different elements available in the request and response? In addition to performance testing tool, it is beneficial to be comfortable using API tools like Postman, SOAP UI, or Parasoft. This allows you to validate the API even before developing the performance test script. By acquiring these skills, you can ensure comprehensive API testing and validation enabling a smoother development process for performance testing. Moving to next one from our list, Service Virtualization. As a performance tester, it is crucial to understand the concept of service virtualization and recognize the benefits it offers. Let me explain you the problem scenario and the underlying need of service virtualization. In complex application architectures, team often rely on third-party systems as a dependencies. However, these third-party systems may not have multiple environments to support comprehensive testing. As a result, functional and non-functional testing teams find themselves competing for limited testing windows. This frequently leads to environmental issues, making it challenging to execute the planned test runs within the allocated time frame. Consequently, the application stability and performance are put at risk. To mitigate these challenges, many application teams opt for service virtualization. By virtualizing services, they create an exact replica of the third-party system's response within their own environment. Instead of sending requests to the actual third-party systems, the responses are obtained within the local environment. This approach eliminates the dependency on the third-party system's environment and allows teams to validate their services' expected behavior. While in many organizations, separate teams to handle the task of service virtualization, it is highly beneficial for performance testers to understand the concept and the essential elements required for virtualizing services. This knowledge will help testers to effectively collaborate with the virtualization teams and ensure the successful virtualization of services for comprehensive performance testing. The next one on our list is Log Monitoring Tools. 
In the past, when encountering issues, development and infrastructure teams would individually log into each server and review the application logs. However, with the increasing complexity of architectures, troubleshooting became challenging as it was impractical to log into every server. This led to the development of log monitoring tools. These log monitoring tools facilitate the forwarding of all application logs to a centralized location, allowing teams to easily query and retrieve the necessary data. This significantly saves time and expedites the process of isolating problems. As log monitoring tools like Splunk, Elasticsearch and Datadog are becoming integrated into environments, it is beneficial to have a foundational understanding of these tools. Moreover, it is essential to understand the process of analyzing data extracted from these logs. Many tools offer capabilities for creating dashboards and reports. Therefore, having knowledge of how to generate these reports and dashboards is an added advantage. By possessing foundational skills in log monitoring tools, we can effectively validate errors from logs and pinpoint and address issues more efficiently. Moving on to the next item on our list, defect tracking tools. In every organization, QA teams utilize tools like Jira or ALM to track their functional defects. This enables them to have a clear understanding of the outstanding issues and their current status. Given that performance testing also identify potential performance issues, it is advisable to track these issues as well. Often times, we are asked to log our performance related issues in the same tool used by the functional testing team. Therefore, it is beneficial to have a basic understanding of using these tools. We may need to learn how to create a defect within the given tool and how to track and update the status. This will help the project teams in consolidating all their project issues into a single centralized platform and eliminating the need for various status emails. Now let's move on to the next item on our list, SQL concepts. There are instances when application teams grant us read-only access to their database and ask us to retrieve or validate the necessary test data directly from the database servers. To accomplish this, it is important to have a foundational understanding of structured query language, which is also called as SQL. This includes knowing how to write queries using SQL and how to execute them against the provided database. You should also possess a basic understanding of concepts such as tables, records, rows and columns. In most cases, teams utilize SQL Explorer as an editor to interact with the database. Therefore, it is recommended to have some basic knowledge of using SQL Explorer. Let's now discuss the next item on our list, user experience performance measurement concepts. With the modern client-side frameworks, we often encounter issues of slowness even if our performance testing results meet the expectations. This occurs because most load testing tools primarily focus on server-side performance and exclude browser performance. You might be wondering about the concept of user experience or client-side performance. User experience refers to how quickly the components on a website are rendered and loaded. This ensures that user can see them and navigate the site seamlessly. Several tools are available in the market to measure the user experience, for instance, Fiddler and Google developer tools, which can be used to assess the client-side performance. These tools help us determine how quickly a page loads and identify any JavaScript or other client-side errors that may be occurring. Additionally, tools like Yslow and Google PageSpeed assist in measuring user experience from a page load perspective. Therefore, acquiring foundational skills in these tools is beneficial for effectively monitoring client-side performance and ensuring a smooth user experience. The next one on our list is cloud computing. In the modern era, applications are increasingly transitioning from on-premises environments to cloud environments, primarily due to the advantages of high availability and reliable systems. Considering this trend, it is essential to familiarize yourself with these cloud environments. Before exploring with the cloud environments, it is beneficial to understand the concept of cloud computing. Various cloud providers exist in today's market with the major ones being AWS, Azure and Google Cloud. It is important to familiarize yourself with the services they offer and their respective service level agreements. Each service provider has its own native monitoring tool for keeping track of their services. Since performance monitoring is a crucial aspect of performance testing, understanding the specifics of these monitoring tools is important. Serverless architecture is a fundamental concept in cloud computing and having a high level understanding of it is beneficial. In the cloud, the pay-as-you-go model is common approach adopted by many organizations. This means that you only pay for the service you utilize. Compared to the on-premises model, this approach saves costs associated with the idle time. Because of this reason, you should understand how are we utilizing the resources during the testing. Otherwise, over allocation may significantly increase the cost. Furthermore, it is important to be aware of the various performance testing challenges that arise with cloud applications. 
While this skill set is a good to have one, it will consistently assist you in efficiently working with cloud environments. The final one on our list is version control and code repository tools. In today's organization, there is a growing trend of requesting performance testers to integrate their performance testing into the CI/CD pipeline. To effectively integrate and maintain code in the repository, it is important for a performance tester to have a basic understanding of version control systems. This includes knowing what version control systems are and being aware of the available tools in the market for maintaining version control. One popular version control system used by many organizations is Git. As a performance tester, it is beneficial to learn the basic commands of Git. All scripts should be stored in a repository from which the pipeline can automatically fetch them. Here, repositories can be classified into two categories: public and private. GitHub is a well-known public repository, largely known for its huge open source community. It encourages people to join discussions, interact with other developers, and open issues. However, due to security concerns, many organizations do not allow their teams to use GitHub. Instead, they prefer using Bitbucket, which is a focused on private repositories. Only members of the organizations have access to these repositories. As a performance tester, it is important to understand the process of pushing these scripts to the repositories. Additionally, you should know how to clone existing scripts and creating a pull request. Although these tasks are primarily associated with developers' day-to-day -day activities, it is beneficial for performance tester to gain some hands-on experience. This is because they may need to work on CI/CD workflows in the future. With the growing importance of performance testing, more and more individuals are expressing interest in learning. If you are currently working as a manual or automation functional tester and wish to transition into performance testing, it is crucial to focus on the following skill set only with an assumption that you are comfortable with other must have skill set. Basically, you don't need to learn software testing because that is also part of one of the QA functional activity. So, you can skip that software testing activity and then start focusing the server architecture basics to understand what is server architecture and what are the different components that are available in the server architecture. Along with that, you also need to master the performance core concepts and then learn one commercial tool like loadrunner and also one open source tool like apache jmeter after that you know you should also focus on basic core programming concepts again here i'm only recommending this skill set for manual testers in case if you are an automation tester i think you can skip this part because you must be using java or some other programming languages in the automation testing finally you should gain some understanding of native monitoring tools for example, Perfman for Windows and Top VM Stats are for Linux. Along with that, if possible, try to learn one of the application performance monitoring tools like Dynatrace, AppDynamics, Neuralic. In case if you are coming from system administrator background, then you should focus on the following skill set. You should learn the fundamental concepts of software testing and you should also master the performance testing core concepts. You should also master the performance testing tools like Loadrunner or Apache JMeter. And then you also learn some basic core concepts of programming. This will definitely help you to start your performance testing journey. In case if you are coming from an non-IT background, it is recommended to master all the must-have skills that I talked about in my previous video. You should gain some foundational skills of software testing and also understand the different methodologies of STLC and learn some server basic architecture concepts, master the performance testing core concepts, learn one commercial performance testing tool like Loadrunner and also a open source tool like Apache JMeter. And you should be comfortable with the basic core programming concepts and learn some monitoring tools like Perfmon or Top, VMstat. And finally, you should also give some importance to the documentation skill set. In case if I miss any other technology background resource, please feel free to Mention it in the comment section and I will try to provide my inputs. As you gain the experience in the performance testing and would like to learn the skill sets of performance engineer, then you should strongly focus on the below skill sets. Firstly, you should master all the performance testing skill set. Some organizations, a performance engineer will also play the tester role. In that situation, you should be comfortable managing all the testing activities along with the other engineering responsibilities. As a performance engineer, you should be comfortable working with different stakeholders to define the non-functional requirements and also validate the existing non-functional requirements. You should have strong front-end and back-end development skills as you may need to isolate the root cause related to the code. You should also be comfortable with the code refactoring skills which are nothing but rewriting the same code in a better way. 
Some situations the bottlenecks may be due to poor web application UI designing issues. So, you should have good knowledge on web development technologies such as HTML, CSS and JavaScript. You should be comfortable doing the GC, nothing but garbage collection analysis and also optimizing the heap memory. You should also be familiar with the database optimizations. For example, you should identify the slow running queries and also providing the recommendations for better performance. You should also be familiar with the load balancing your optimization techniques. In case if the load is not distributing in all the servers, you should be identify the root cause and provide necessary recommendations. You should also identify any OS related performance issues and provide the recommendations to optimize the performance. So, you should have strong OS foundational skills. You should also be comfortable for understanding the problems on the client side, for example, browser and provide necessary recommendations to optimize it. As a performance engineer, you should also do application capacity planning and also infrastructure sizing. Finally, you should have strong bottleneck analytical skills and provide the recommendations for optimizing the performance. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe and turn on notifications so you won't miss any updates. I appreciate your support and value your comments and suggestions. Please share this video or channel with others who might be looking for this type of content. I will be creating more interesting technical videos for the upcoming week. Until then, stay curious and keep learning.